Hi there, welcome to my kitchen. Jessica Cruz here, Ayurveda practitioner, massage therapist, and yoga teacher who loves to cook. I specialize in Ayurveda cuisine and I'm going to show you how to cook ghee today. It is Saturday, July 28th. Yesterday we had the full moon eclipse and so the best time to cook ghee happens to be on the full moon. So I thought this would be an extra special time to share this recipe. I'm going to grab the camera and show you my pot over here to see what's cooking. So in here I've got two pounds of butter chopped into cubes just so that it melts a little quicker and more evenly. And I'm just using a heavy bottom stainless steel um, pot here and we have it on low. So that's the trick to cooking ghee. It's not necessarily difficult, but it is something that requires patience. You want to make sure that you're not um, doing anything else in the kitchen, ideally, when you're cooking ghee. So it's not something to make at lunchtime or you know dinner time when you're gonna be cooking, but something to do just kind of on its own as a special event. You can infuse your ghee with mantras. Um, one of the most special mantra you can infuse your ghee with is the Mahamrtyunjay mantra. So we can sing that one together as we wait for the ghee to um, heat up. Om Triyam Bhattam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukkami Vabandhanam Mrityo Rukshi Yamamrita Te Om Aim Hrim Klim Chamunda Yediche Namaha Svaha Svaha Om Triyam Bhattam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukkami Vabandhanam the only other thing you need for making ghee is a clean vessel to put it in after so that it seals really well, so mason jar works great. Um, I always sanitize them by boiling them and then drying them really well. It's very important that we don't mix any water in with our ghee. So same thing when we're going to use the ghee after, we always use a clean, dry spoon to ladle the ghee. Um, ghee actually does not have to be kept in the fridge, it can be kept on the counter, but you just really have to make sure not to introduce any water into it so that there's no um, heat growth of bacteria. Um, so what else do you need? You'll also need a strainer. So I use um, ideally a metal sieve, and then I also use a cheesecloth just to really make sure that I get all of the, you know, all of the little impurities out. So this is a nice organic cotton. Um, other tips for making the ghee: um, we don't use a metal spoon for sure. Ideally, no spoon at all. We don't want to stir the ghee when it's cooking. Um, if you need to move it, just do as I have been moving the pot around. The more ghee you make at one time, obviously the longer it will take. Usually it takes about 20 minutes per pound. So this will probably take around half an hour to 40 minutes or so. Um, the process is going to be that it will sound like a rainstorm. So it will be a very light rainstorm and then going into a heavy rainstorm as the ghee starts um, boiling out all of the water and separating all of the impurities out of the butter. It will also separate the casein and the lactose. All of the milk solids will go to the bottom or float to the top. Um, then once that process is complete, it will sound like the rainstorm is starting to calm down. It will turn back into a very light rainstorm and then eventually it will stop. So it sounds almost like you know the, the rain on the roof. Um, other than that, you just have to meditate and pay a lot of attention to make sure that it doesn't burn. Being that it is butter, it can burn very easily, which is why we cook it on the low flame. Um, and yeah, the other tip would be to wait for that moment when it smells like popcorn, kind of depending on what scents you live out of most, um, as I guess how you'll experience your ghee cooking. but. If you are visual, you know, the things to look for are the bubbles will get um, less and less frequent. There will be almost no bubbles at the end when it's done. If you are um, someone who lives through the experience of smelling, then you will smell like the ghee smells like popcorn, not burnt popcorn. <laughs> if it smells like burnt popcorn, it's burnt ghee. So it's just that 
really rich buttery like popcorn smell um, and again if you live more through your auditory sense then it will sound like the rainstorm coming to an end so those are the signs that the ghee is done I will fast forward and show you how it is at the end And the rainstorm begins. This is the ghee in the cooking phase. You can see it's bubbling watts, even though it's on very low heat. So that's all the water coming out. All this stuff around the rim there, that's just from me moving the pot and this milk solids, all the impurities sticking to the sides. So there's different methods. Some people say to skim this white stuff off the top, but I was taught just to leave it and just strain it all together. Now, of course, the authentic way of making ghee would be to make your own butter as well, ideally from curd or yogurt. So you would make your own curd, not just store-bought, but um, straight from your milk and make your own yogurt. Then from that, you would churn it, which would separate into buttermilk and butter. And then you would take that butter and make your ghee. I am working a very busy schedule right now back in Canada. And um, so I don't have time right now to make my own butter. So this was just made from a beautiful organic um, butter from a small family run farm where the cows live happy lives. They are ahimsa cows with non-violence um yeah you know the better the butter this is the one i used in canada here it's a cultured unsalted definitely unsalted um the better the butter the better the ghee so organic is always best ahimsa you know cows that live good lives is even better so i'll tell you about some of the benefits of ghee while we're waiting for the last couple minutes here um, this is a very healthy fat to add to your diet. Um, it does have some of the same benefits of butter. For example, butyric acid is found in both in higher concentrations in ghee, actually. And this um, acid helps to basically create a healthy microbiome in your gut. So it's like a probiotic. Um, we also have butyric acid in our gut, so it's, you know, this healthy fat increases the healthy bacteria in our gut, um, especially if it's from a cultured butter. Ghee is very good for lubricating all of your joints, all of your tissues. They say it even lubricates the memory and the mind, um, enhancing intelligence and memory. They say it will keep you young, healthy, and flexible. Um, it also helps to draw the nutrients very deep within the tissues, so it will help you to absorb and assimilate the nutrients from your food much better. You can use it instead of an oil for cooking. You don't want to use it for every single meal you cook. Um, it does have to be used in moderation, just like butter. If you have high cholesterol, then you do want to be careful. It's a better option than butter, but it does still have a bit of cholesterol. It is proven though to um, increase your good HDL cholesterol. And yeah, overall it's just a really, really great healthy oil to add to your diet. Um, one of the things though that you want to keep in mind is that because it has that effect of drawing things deep within the tissues, you would want to avoid ghee if you are ill with a cold or a flu or any sort of virus or bacteria or anything because you don't want to draw that deeper within your tissues. So that would be my tip for you. So my fridge is pretty loud, but 
can't really hear the ghee and you'll see that there's barely any bubbles coming. A good way to check is to move the pot around like this a little. And just see if there's any more bubbles coming to the surface, which means still some water and milk solids getting purified. But this is about done, you guys. Just a few more seconds. And then I'll turn off the heat, let it cool, and strain. Now this is what the ghee looks like as a finished product. We're going to just strain it through this metal seam with the cheesecloth. So our last step with making the ghee is just putting it into its clean vessel. So here I've got my mason jar. I've already filled one. Just show you how I'm pouring it in here, straining it through my metal sieve with a cheesecloth to make sure it's super pure. And I like to sing a mantra as I'm pouring the ghee one last time. Om Triyambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Kushtivardhanam Urvarukamiva Bandhanam Mrityor Mukshi Amamrita There you have it folks, so that's your ghee making lesson. Um, this will keep in a sealed airtight container for up to one year in the counter. They do say that the older the ghee, the more healing benefits it has. Um, also, we made this ghee on the full moon to enhance its healing properties as well with the power of the full moon. I infused it with the Mahamrtyunjai mantra, which is a mantra for immortality, removing illness and death. And also the Chamundi mantra, which is invoking the Shakti power, this divine feminine creative energy. That is the cooking mantra. So I hope you all enjoyed your ghee making lesson today. Please um, be sure to follow the instructions on the blog here and let me know if you have any questions. Namaste. This is what's left over from the butter in the ghee making process. It's all of the milk solids, the casein, lactose, impurities. So you don't want to see those um, turning brown on the bottom. If they're brown, then you've burnt the ghee. It can be a little tiny bit golden underneath the beige, but um, yeah, keep it golden when you're making your liquid gold. Much what love. What do you do with all that stuff after you're done? Well, if you have a cute little dog, you can give it to them. Do you want some of the ghee, honey? You want some of this stuff from the ghee? What do you think? You like ghee, don't you? <laughs> She's a bit of a cuppa girl though, so I might just give her a little tiny bit this time. <laughs>